All right, so we have six extra ocular muscles, and they kind of make our eyes go in various directions. Look up, look down, side to side, and they make our eyes look up and out. So you need to know, be able to identify these muscles on pictures. So one of the common mistakes that happens, and Dr. Lovell gives you a little bit of a hint here, talking about where the medial rectus is, is close to the lateral uh, uh, apparatus. So if I take an eye, and I see an eye on N. If you're on a model or a picture, and you're looking... <laughs> oh, wait, just keep talking. Keep talking. Thanks. <laughs> so, if we look at the medial aspect of the eye, this is freaking upside down. The medial aspect of the eye is where we're going to find the lacrimal gland. Will you get away from me? <laughs> <laughs> this is education. All right, so we have the lacrimal, gl the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal apparatus is the medial side. If the model shows that tear duct, this is another way of saying it, you're going to know you're on the medial side. So otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell. On our model here, we can't really see too much, but the, when we look at this, our inferior oblique, so our medial rectus is going to be this, was going to be these right here, so this one right here. So we have six extra ocular muscles. We have a medial rectus. Rectus just means straight, it means it's a straight muscle. So we have a straight muscle on the medial side. It's going to turn the eyeball in. We're going to have a straight muscle on the lateral side. And that is going to be our lateral rectus. Okay, and, that the, and then what that muscle does is it turns our eyeball out. We have two straight muscles on the top and the underneath. On the top, we have a superior rectus, and we're also going to have an eyeball that falls apart. We're going to have an inferior rectus muscle, which is this one here. So when you're looking at things in a couple of weeks, and you're asked to identify the muscles, and if the, what the chances are that it's not going to be one of these models. There's a high chance of that. And the reason why is it's very difficult on this model to orient yourself. Why? One, you can't see the lateral ap apparatus like he gave you a clue for. Right? You can see it a little bit on this model. That's all taped up and falling apart. This <laughs> on the ghetto model. This <laughs> model gets worse than the Okay, so, uh, thanks. Appreciate that. This is the lacrimal apparatus, which makes this the medial side of the eye. This is the lateral side of the eye. So either a picture or a model is going to have to have some of these parts to it to show you to be able to orient your muscles. So we have the medial rectus, lateral rectus, superior and inferior rectus, and you see the inferior rectus kind of right here on the back. That's the muscle you see right here. Then we have two muscles that act like pulleys, and they're referred to as oblique muscles. And so you have a superior oblique and an inferior oblique. You're seeing the superior oblique right here. And then you see the inferior oblique a little bit better underneath here. Now, the hard part is kind of discerning what you're looking at. If the, if the muscle it's actually attached to the tendinous portion here. When you look at this, it's, they are the only muscles that aren't in a straight line. So, if it is, so what they end up doing is they pull your eyes up and out or down and in. And they actually rotate the eyeball on an axis. But on a practical, it's, you have to orient yourself first. So in other words, in order to do that, whoever sets up this practical has to give you something like that. Because it's the only way you're going to be able to, be able to tell medial from lateral. Again, if you look at this big gland that sits over here, this is the lacrimal gland. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 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 all right, so we have a lacrimal gland. So what's going to happen here is that the lacrimal gland is going to produce tears. And those tears are going to flow straight across the eyeball, and they're going to be collected by this, this duct apparatus that's over here. You ever kind of really kind of, you know, either have teared up a lot, and then you get sniffles? Mm -hmm. 
drains down your nose? Yes, yeah, because, because this, this duct that's right here is called the nasolacrimal duct, and it essentially drops right into your nasal cavity. So the tears actually flow across, to lubricate the eye, to clean the eye of debris, and then they're going to come over to this little duct here. So we have this little lacrimal sac that you're seeing right here that's going to end up going into a duct that goes down into the nasal passageway. But the, this is the medial side. And again, what I'm trying to get you to see is that on a practical, you're going to have to have something that orients you, whether it's a picture or a model, and it's going to have to have some of these other parts, or you're never going to be able to tell medial for lateral from the eye. If it is, you know the glands on the lateral side, the ducts on the medial side. the tears come from? This the tears are made by this gland. Okay. And so then you can easily say, okay, this is medial rectus and lateral rectus. Then superior and inferior on that. And again, for the oblique ones, you're just looking for a muscle that crosses the eyeball like this. Notice this is superior or rectus like that. The oblique muscles are going to cross the eyeball on an angle like that. They're not going to be oriented in any kind of straight plane type way. Okay, so those are six ocular muscles. <clears throat> on all of our eyes, except for, of course, our model, we have eyelashes, which we all have. And then we have conjunctiva. What the frick is a conjunctiva? Well, if you look here, you see the pink section of the model? If you think about where the eyelashes are actually attaching into, the conjunctiva are actually there contact with the eyelids. They're attached with the inferior portion of the eyelid and the superior portion of your eyelid. They're kind of, and essentially they help to kind of protect the eye from kind of scratching. So the conjunctiva, we have a, this one down bottom, we have a conjunctiva up top, the pink portion where the eyelashes would attach. We talked about the lacrimal apparatus a little bit. So again, lacrimal gland is going to produce the tears. They're going to flow across the eyeball like this. They're going to end up in the lacrimal sac. It's going to end up going down into the nasolacrimal duct, which is going to drain right into the nasal cavity. All right. So now we kind of do that. Now we're going to kind of have to go, we go into the eye a little bit, because that's about as much of the external stuff that we can see. That's when this really nice ghetto vibe model comes in. <laughs> so, when we look at the eyeball, so in other words, in a minute, when we kind of start to dissect this out, we look at the eyeball itself, not necessarily from where we see the lens, which would be this section here, right? So this is how it looks. Oh my god. Oh, you know, it's more ghetto. <laughs> so not necessarily where the light comes in, like this, but the whole posterior portion of the eye has three coverings. Okay, it has a tough, <laughs> it has a tougher outer covering, then it's going to have a vascular layer, and then it's going to have a neural layer. And you see them written there, kind of not really in any good order on your handout, so let's go over each of them. So we have an, a, a tough kind of connective tissue outer layer that's going to lead to this vascular layer that you're seeing here, that's going to lead to a very inside neural layer that you're seeing inside the model, the yellow layer. The outer, tougher white area of connective tissue is referred to as the sclera. And that's what you see on the plastic model. This is sclera. That's the white part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we kind of, we, did you finish the brain lecture? Uh, no. We're still doing neurons. Did you do the ventricles? No. No. Did you go over CSF yet? No. You'll get it. Ain't there yet. You only got like a handful of weeks. There's like a couple of assistants that are. You talked about a little bit, like the ependymal cells. Ependymal cells, Whatever, right? You know. So he was talking about the glial cells, right? Well, I'm the re the reason why I'm bringing that up is that the glial the ventricles okay. produce cerebral spinal fluid, and how cerebral spinal fluid is made is that blood comes to where those ventricles are, and it's filtered through this thing called the choroid plexus. And choroid actually is a bloody layer, and that's kind of what this layer is here in the eye. So remember, we had an outer, tougher layer that was a sclera. We had a middle layer that had some vascularity, which is called the choroid, okay, and that's this vascular layer that you're seeing right here. So from this angle, this is sclera, this vascular layer is choroid, and then we go into an uh, inside layer 
of neural tissue called the retina. So once